Joined now by Cleveland Browns head coach Freddie Kitchens. A year ago, coach, it's the summertime. It's hard knocks. It's still a little bit of ha ha Cleveland Browns. A year later, man, you guys are going to enter as the, the favorites to win your division. And there's real buzz of, and, and interest in your program. You're on the inside of it. How do you describe the excitement that surrounds your team? Well, it has to start first and foremost with the passion that, you know, our fans have and that, that hopefully we generate on a day in and day out basis as an organization, uh, which I think we've done a great job of doing. And uh, but now it's about winning football games. That's the easy part is uh, having those expectations and stuff like that. But um, we, uh, you know, we're going to approach every day the same where it's, uh, you know, it's a day in and day out business for us from the standpoint of we're going to do what we can control each day uh, to the best of our ability. And that's the only thing we're going to worry about. The expectations is for other people to decide, but our expectation level of how we practice and how we prepare is always going to be the same. I read today that, that you said you hadn't met or, or, or talked with Odell Beckham Jr., but your first words to him were going to be, I love you. That feels aggressive to me, but I get it. How is he going to change your, <laughs> how's he going to change your team? <laughs> I tell you, you know, uh, Odell brings passion to the game. I like passion. I, I've, I've said it before, the difference between being good and elite uh, you've got a lot of great players in the National Football League, and, and some of them play with passion, some of them doesn't. But I know this, to be elite, you have to play with passion. And all the great ones I've been around are like that. And then that kind of um, uh, goes over into your team and, and things like that. So I think Odell can bring a lot of good to our team uh, from the standpoint of uh, the passion he plays with. And, uh, and, of course, his skill level speaks for itself. Your quarterback does as well, and man, I was flat wrong about Baker Mayfield. I loved watching him at OU, but I didn't know he could translate as quickly at the level that he did. As an old quarterback yourself, what is it that you appreciate most about what he brings to the field and to the room? Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, his competitiveness of uh, the way he approaches practice, games, planning, preparing. All those little things, those little intricacies that sometimes makes the difference between uh, good players and, and uh, success on the field and not on the field. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of, lot of people in the National Football League that are good players uh, that don't necessarily translate to the field from a team setting. And our success uh, is going to be dictated on the passion that we bring to the field. And Baker is a, a big part of that. How quickly did you realize that he had that thing, that it that people talk about? Uh, pretty quick. I mean, you know, the I've always thought that the, uh, the definition of being a leader is someone looking at you and gaining confidence. And if you can do that, and Baker does that, uh, he's definitely a leader on our team. Uh, just from the standpoint of uh, the position he plays. But when people look at him and gain confidence, whether it's a, uh, an offensive lineman, a receiver, uh, a linebacker, whatever, if they have confidence that you're going to do your job, uh, then, of course, that confidence carries over to the other aspects of the game. Well, that's something that you've lived. Uh, you, your, your journey within the game, how hard you work to become the, the Alabama quarterback and a single digit out there, man, tougher than – a $2 stake, as they say, man, back in the day, you were out there slinging it for Bama. <laughs> How much, Freddie, of, of what it took to become that, the Bama quarterback, goes into becoming what you are now, a guy that can lead men in the National Football League? I think it, it's everything. Um, you know, I'm never going to try to be someone that I'm not, and I think I learned that early and often uh, from playing quarterback at Alabama. But... Uh, as you go through life, there's going to be different challenges and, and different things that you uh, try to associate with the game. But at the, at the very minute level of just staying true to yourself uh, and what you believe in and just keeping your head down and not worrying about the noise, outside noise, that doesn't really matter, all right, whether you're successful or not. It really comes down to what you do. And uh, that's what I've tried to do in my career. Uh, and hopefully that's what our team tries to do moving forward. I know we did that at the end of last year, uh, but every team's different. Uh, no, you can have the same players come back and, and those players, uh, you know, excel in certain areas and they digress in certain areas. So no two teams are ever the same. Uh, but I just want us to have a team that will 
keep her head down and work and see where we're at at the end of all this, which is basically the same thing I've done in my career. I'm glad you mentioned what you said about just being who you are, because I, I, there's a sense from, from where I sit, I don't know, I don't live it, but I, there's a sense that you got to look a certain way, act a certain way, dress a certain way or whatever to, to, to get to the, the, the spot you now occupy. You got there by being you. Was there ever a part, Freddie, that you thought, I, I don't know if, the, if I'm enough to get where you now sit? Of course, you know, when you get, uh, when you get passed up on opportunities and and things like that, of course you do. But I think you have to have a gut check yourself and say, right. hey, do I want to be someone fake? Do I want to be someone that I'm not? Or do I want to just stay true to myself? And I'm always going to be true to myself. And whether other people can accept that or not, that's their problem. It's not mine. And, uh, and I don't really care. Um, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be who I am. Uh, I'm pretty sure our ownership, wants, they want me to remain who I am. Uh, and I know our players do. And that's the only people I worry about. Hell yeah, I love it. All right, on the way out, a dumb caveman question that just, I, I think about that number nine back in the day at T-Town and, and, and the toughness, and then I think about Baker coming out with the swag he had. This is such a dumb ca caveman question, but I'm asking anyway. Who would, be, who would win a fight between Freddie Kitchens, quarterback at Alabama, and a time machine head-to-head -head with Baker Mayfield if push came to shove? I say number nine from Tuscaloosa. I would love to have Baker here to debate that <laughs> right now. Um, I know what he'd say. But yeah, I mean, I would <laughs> I would have whooped the hell out of Baker when I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the right answer. Now, see, the, you know what the beauty is? Is he doesn't know that, and he would fight you on that, and that's yeah. why I think you guys mesh so well together, and I think that's why you guys have a chance to do something special, is that he would want to fight you on that, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. He would. He would still to this day. It's just... <laughs> You know, I'm a little older now and can't move quite as much. But, um, you know, that's all That's all unjust. But it's, uh, you know, it would have been a pretty good fight, though, I'd have to imagine. No, it wouldn't have. You'd, you'd have gotten rid of him early. He, they, these young guys today, they, don't, they wouldn't have known what they were up for. Hey, Freddie, listen, I appreciate your time. I love your approach, and uh, I look forward to seeing how things go for you and your team next year, all right? I appreciate it, Scott. Thanks for your time, man. No, thank you. We appreciate it, man.